Before the video starts, I'd like a quick disclaimer. First off, do as I say, not as I do. Second off, there is going to be some language in this video that may not be appropriate. And also, I'm, I just, I'm getting over a sinus infection, so excuse the nasally voice. Please don't crack corona jokes. All right, man, it's not funny. Thank you. Well, you know, 700 bucks is, uh, 700 bucks. I present to you the Crown Crustoria. Now, I'm not gonna lecture you guys in the backstory of this car. I'm just gonna go ahead and say that it is a very high mileage, $700 Facebook Marketplace car that I bought after my Volkswagen Jetta got totaled. My intentions with this vehicle were simple. It would be my daily for a good year or maybe two at most to accumulate 60,000 miles until my aunt gave me her BMW that I've been working on continuously as she is searching for a new car. Well, she ended up giving it to me anyhow. So, I now have two cars. But, for the saying of this video, I'm still going to keep that car registered, both of them, and the Crown Vix gets better gas mileage, and I... Wait for the BMW review, it's coming. So, I'm driving that a lot more now. It's more practical on gas, it's becoming winter time, I trust that car more, I really shouldn't trust anything about it, but I trust it more in the snow than I will with the BMW, not because it's good at driving in the snow, matter of fact, I bet it's dog shit at it, but just because of the fact that I don't have to worry about wrecking a really nice car. So, let's get into this, shall we? So, this car has, like I said, had a long life. It's got 341,000 miles at the making of this video. As you can see, it is completely scratched, dinged, and dented. And the fenders don't match, because the original fenders, when I was replacing them, were so rusted that they disintegrated. She is a rust bucket. A very reliable rust bucket, nonetheless. The frame is in good shape, but, you know... Anyhow, I do like the really, those tires right there, and the tires are worth more than the car itself. And in the interior, as you can see, we got that 90s Ford smell to it, with the uh, good old white leather, although it's beige now because sun fading is a thing, as well as cigarette smoke. I think the first owners did smoke in this car, in the good old beige with fake wood trim interior for the headliner. Because American luxury is a joke. And the deep trunk. I know everyone seems to think that these trunks are huge, but they are most definitely not huge. They're actually pretty modestly sized, and the downside about them is that there's no folding rear seat. Because that thing that you see the spare tire on is actually where the gas tank is, as well as the differential and other components. I got a six-track in the back because I got the luxury you know, stereo option on this car, which is pretty freaking cool. Got my jack in my funnel because, you know, modular 4.6 issues and a fucking fuel pump G4 switch. What happened to this Ford was concerned that if you get rear-ended, that your gas tank might fall off the mounts and present a leaking issue if you had the trunk fully loaded, that is. So they installed a G4 sensor that if you get hit pretty hard or if you hit that sensor hard enough, which you just saw back there, it will actually shut the fuel pump off. You can see the frame, and it is straight piped, and there aren't some bad spots in the frame. For the most part, it's spotless, but right here, you can see my you know, my cat pack magical bullshit exhaust. It just goes out of the two post cats and to the AutoZone special $7 straight pipe. It just connects where the old muffler was. I'll explain the muffler situation and why I cut it off in a bit. There's the bad spot. That's the only bad spot on the frame of the entire car. Uh, is that spot there, and on the other side of where the axle is, you have a really bad, bad spot. You're right there. See it? Oh, yeah. Nice crack right through. Hole through the frame. Typical 90s Ford bullshit. Um, you know, it happens. It's unfortunate. It's funny because this side that's rusted through in the frame is actually the good fender side. Like, the fenders over here were not that bad, where on the other side, the frame is spotless, but the fucking fenders are just like, as you can see right there. 
Um, so again, it's, uh, it's a piece of shit, but... And, of course, you've got the typical 90s four, where if you punch the bottom rocker pan, or the, the, you know, side still, it all just flakes rust underneath. Typical crap with these things. It's not uncommon. Um... And under the hood, I'm not going to get too much into it because I know some people may not like this, but under the hood, we get the modular 4.6 V8 modular dumpster fire. And these things are really underpowered, but in this application, it's understressed. And it is the original engine and transmission configuration, I should probably mention. Only modifications I've done, cold air intake, yeah, maybe a couple of plumbing issues and other stuff I've resolved in the engine bay. But all the emissions equipment does function, and it is mostly stock. I don't plan on changing it. There's no reason to. And I got a big battery in there because the original one was total shit. And the alternator, which, by the way, is original to the fucking car. 340,000 miles, and it's still working. There's the date there. And yeah, I've done basic maintenance. I've had to pull the oil pan off and replace the oil pan gasket, as well as fix the oil pump. It wasn't really making good pressure. And I had to pull the original timing guides out. The timing chain guides, unfortunately, in these engines are known for snapping, which is why Ford recommends that you change them. But some mechanics don't do that because that's too fucking hard. And what happens is on startup, the timing chain guides get brittle. They crack. And when they get whipped around by the timing chain as the timing chain tensioners, which are oil pressure based, so in that quick five seconds when you're starting, mainly within that first second, let alone... It's not going to be running smooth. You've got these chains that are pretty loose, and it hits the plastic. Plastic breaks, goes into the oil pan, if you're lucky. But unfortunately, it gets stuck in the sump, which is bad. So, it happens. And there's your brake fluid right there. And the cruise control module, which is mounted over here in the engine bay using an electronic servo, and the servo actually controls like a throttle body that's connected up or a throttle cable that's connected up to the main throttle body. They're pretty good engines. They're reliable. Uh, mine's got all the repairs done to it. There was a recall with the uh, coolant water necks on the actual intake plenum. They're made out of plastic and what happens when you put coolant that's 250 degrees up with plastic with plastic gaskets? The plastic gaskets in the actual manifold melt. And of course, again, 90s four typical bullshit. You can pull stuff off that you probably shouldn't. So, although that should be bolted in, I don't even have it bolted in because I'm going to be replacing it with the police car version only because the police car versions, I can just repaint to like a chroma shitty color and it's good. Mint. By the way, most of the body, I should probably mention as it is registered, somehow it passed inspection like this, but, uh, Zip ties hold the front bumper and pretty much everything together in this car. It's kind of scary. And there's the interior, as you can see. you got to have a whole can of Febreze in there because it smells like 90s Ford. And the original owner did have a stroke behind the wheel, which is why you see a lot of these scratches on the side here. He hit a guardrail. It happens, unfortunately. Uh, so here's why it's straight pipe, okay? The original muffler had so many rusted holes in the top of it that... All the sound and fumes and stuff just went into the cabin. It was basically unbearable. So, what I did was, I went on eBay and bought this variable baffle muffler, the ones that you can make quiet or loud through, like, a touch of a button and stuff, and that worked really well for a, say, a little bit less than a week, and then what happened was I made too much back pressure with it in the closed position, and it melted those little shitty plastic gears, and it broke on the motor. So, I went to AutoZone and said, fuck it, we're going out and getting that $7 two-inch extension uh, pipe, and we're going to use that. <coughs> <coughs> and that works fantastic. Now, the problem is, the stock exhaust in this car, which is the restrictive one, has a turndown pipe. That's fine. Except, what happens with sound that's being bounced off of a hard object that is completely parallel to the object it's being emitted from? It bounces back at a complete direct angle. So what happens is, all that sound was getting bounced back in all different directions, and a lot of it was being bounced back straight up. And that's where it's a problem, because all that sound is getting bounced back into the trunk and then the cabin where we're trying to get rid of it, and it sounds terrible. So what I did was I cut off the exhaust tip, 
and I took an old piece of my Volkswagen's exhaust where it goes over the cross frame and the tie rods and shit and over to the back of the car and I simply used seat clamps and a connector from AutoZone, coupled it up there so it bends down and under and a little bit to the side then it comes right back up with a little tractor flap on it. So why do I have it going straight up like that? One, reduction in cabin noise. Yes, it makes a huge difference. A lot of people don't know it, but it does. Two, this is the big thing. The reason I did that was also to help vent fumes straight up. See, with turn down pipes and you're sitting there idling, the fumes can kind of like go underneath the car if the wind's blowing in that direction, and nobody really likes that. And so, what are the reasons of the tractor flap? Well, one, it's fucking funny as shit. We, got, we all gotta admit that. It's pretty funny. Second off, it's not just funny, but it does have a practical purpose. It also goes ahead and it seals the, the exhaust pipe up from actual water. And there's a U-bend in it. So, yeah, water won't go into the catalytics or anything like that. Not like it would harm it, but it doesn't get there. But it just helps, you know, being assured. And the other thing is, the reason it's like that, and this is the big thing, is the tractor flap actually helps in an enclosed environment with a straight pipe with that U-bend you see right there. All the sound gets shot straight up, and if you've got a hard surface above you, that's hell to pay for everyone who's next to you, such as in a parking garage. I know this from experience. So, that tractor flap actually helps when the car's at near idle, that tractor flap all the wind and all the air that's trying to rush around and out of the exhaust helps and gets pushed on the flap and actually helps compress the sound a little bit. I don't know if it makes any sense, but it's not as loud idling. And unless you really lay on it, it helps keep the sound at bay, which hopefully, if you're laying on it, it's out in an open area where the sound can just be vented straight up into the air with no obstructions, and you're not pissing anyone off. And it does help out a lot. And Honestly, it sounds pretty fucking cool with the tractor flap on it. It rattles and stuff because it's a metal flap, but you get the idea. So you're probably wondering, how does it drive? Well, pretty nicely, actually. Being that this is the P74 package, in case for anyone wondering what the P74 trim is, it's the Panther Body 74 trim, and basically it's just the luxury handling trim. This car used to have air suspension, it doesn't anymore. It's been replaced with traditional coils and shocks due to the fact that the rear suspension airbags were on the passenger side, they were leaking pretty bad. That side's really rusty, so you'll wonder why. Good low-end torque. It gets up and goes if it needs to, which I can demonstrate in the video later on. But, um, you know, it's, uh, it's pretty good. Gas mileage, I know I'm gonna have a smart ass say it, but here it is. Look right there on the dash. That's not bullshit. If you drive them conservatively, you can get 30 miles to the gallon. Just keep in mind, though, that's like constant straight traffic at 40 miles an hour to 40, you know, 40 to 50 miles an hour. The minute you start pulling hills with this sucker and you do have to downshift, which normally it can get up hills without downshifting with too much trouble, um, compared to my Jetta at least, and the minute you have curvy roads and stop and go traffic, your fuel economy is going in the toilet. This car isn't for anyone. If this car uh, to sum it up, 
if you're doing point A to point B, straight shot, highway traffic for between 40 to 65 miles an hour, this is your car. If you expect anything else from a car, this isn't your car. It doesn't handle. It's very sloppy. The power steering is everywhere but where it should. The whole fucking steering rack wants a divorce because it's just a loose steering rack. That's how typical, you know, boats are with these things. The only problem is the steering wheel has like four inches of play because of all the mileage. And what about this car? I had so much money. I had so much parts in the trunk when I bought it, so... So, it wasn't really an issue that the steering rack was sloppy. I have a spare steering rack. I just had that time to put it in. Anyhow, as you can tell, the car just drives fine. Just remember, don't gas it. Drive it conservatively. You'll get like 30 to 32 miles to the gallon. My record is 34. And I mean, I was really big towing it, so... Ride comforts, it's a giant rolling sofa. It's very comfortable, despite all the mileage on it. Just, again, um, does it corner well? Again, I'm going to answer this no, but you can corner it. It will throw a fit within every bit that you do it. It will chirp the tires. It will tell you, I don't like this. You can see the steering wheel. It'll tell you it doesn't like it, but you will force it, and it will do it. So, yeah. And don't worry. You haven't seen the last of this car. I'll be making more videos as I work on it and update it. I only plan to be having this car for another 60,000 miles, maybe two years, whatever, which whatever comes first. So, you know, you will see more.